In this section, our goal is to be able to perform operations on polynomials by applying the laws of exponents. Specifically, we'll be able to simplify monomial expressions and multiply polynomials in which the exponents are integers. Let's begin with some vocabulary. Remember in a monomial like 5x cubed, the 5, the number in front or multiplied to the variable, is called the coefficient. When we have a power, a power is technically this part, the x cubed. The x cubed is the power. Parts of the power include the base. The base, think of like a bottom, base like a bottom. It's the part that's at the bottom. The exponent is the part that's at the top. The 3 is the exponent. These are words that we're going to be using today. We're going to talk about the laws of exponents. First of all, sometimes we just add or subtract polynomials. We've done that before, but I wanted to put that in here today so that we don't confuse it when we're multiplying polynomials. Adding and subtracting polynomials is just combining like terms. The exponents stay the same. For example, 3x squared plus 5x squared are like terms, and that makes 8x squared. Notice just the coefficients were added, but the x squared remained an x squared. Recall that like terms have the same variables, these are both x's, and the same exponent, these are both 2 in the exponent. So x squared and x squared stays x squared when we add or subtract. Let's take a look at this example. Which are the like terms? This one is an x to the fifth, and this one is an x to the fifth. So we can combine these. 6x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth makes 3 x to the fifth, because those are 6 minus 3 for the coefficients. We also have like terms, the positive 5y and the positive 8y. Same variable, same exponent of invisible 1. 5 plus 8 for the coefficients makes 13, so positive 13y. Notice we also have a 4x squared, but this x is not like this x because this has a different exponent. So this is not like anything. Positive 4x squared in the end. So that's a review of adding and subtracting, just combining like terms. Now we get to what to do when we're multiplying or dividing. Multiplying requires keeping the same base and adding the exponents. For example, notice x cubed times x squared. x cubed, remember that's the same as saying x times x times x, and x squared is the same as saying x times x. So how many x's do we have all together? One, two, three, four, five. This shows five x's all together. So x to the fifth is the final answer. However, the fast way, such that we don't have to write it out, is to think, well, we have three x's and two more x's, so altogether multiplying makes three plus two x's, or five x's. So the fast way is to add the exponents. Use this as your visual. Here's an example, and let's use the commutative and associative properties to put these together, to rearrange them so that things that we can multiply are near each other, such as the 2 and the 7. Let's write this as 2 times 7, and then we'll put the x's next to each other, group those together using the associative property x cubed times x, and then we can also put the y's closer to each other, y to the 6th times y to the 4th. So these numbers right here, 2 times 7, is just 14, 
And then remember when we don't see an exponent like x, it's x to the first. So we're going to add these exponents. 3 plus 1 makes 4, so that is x to the fourth. And then because we're multiplying these, the base stays the same, and we'll add these. 6 plus 4 makes 10, so that makes y to the tenth. And there's our final answer, 14, x to the fourth, y to the tenth. Let's take a look at how this is similar to dividing. In dividing, we keep the same base and subtract the exponents. Let's use this as our visual. So again, let's think about what it looks like when we break this down. x cubed means x, x, x x squared in the denominator, x, x. So when we're dividing, x goes into x once, x goes into x once, and we're left with 1x in the numerator. So that's the same as saying 3x's, subtract 2x's, and we're left with 1x in the numerator, x to the first, or just x. So the quick way is to think of subtracting the exponents while the base stays the same. Let's look at an example. Working with the y's first, notice where the bigger exponent is. That's the bigger exponent. So when we subtract, where are we going to have more y's left over? If I write it out like y, 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 where are there more y's in the denominator? So a 9 in the numerator. 3 in the denominator, and when I subtract, I'm going to end up with more y's down here. So we'll do 7 minus 5 in the denominator. So that makes 9 over 3y squared. But then 3 can go into 9 three times. 3 goes into itself once and into 9 three times. So our final answer is going to look like 3 over y squared. Let's take a look at another example that has a lot of variables in it. Starting with the a's, I have a to the tenth and a squared. Where's the bigger exponent for the a's? The bigger exponent is in the numerator. So when I make my next step, I'm going to do a to the 10 minus 2 in the numerator. But for the b's, notice that the bigger exponent is in the denominator. 4 is bigger than 1. So I'm going to do b to the 4 minus 1 in the denominator. Where is there a bigger exponent? That side wins. How about the c? There's only one c, so we don't have to worry about that one. We'll just leave it where it started. Okay, so let's write what we have next. Still a 4 in the numerator, a 20 in the denominator, and 10 minus 2 is 8. So a to the 8th, b to the 3rd, times c in the denominator. Now we can clean up these numbers a little bit because they share a common factor. 4 goes into itself once and into 20 five times. So our final answer for this, 1a to the 8 is just a to the 8, 5b cubed times c. Very good. So remember, multiplying numbers, we add the exponents. Dividing numbers, we subtract the exponents. Power to a power. So that's when we see a lot of parentheses. We keep the same base and we multiply the exponents. Use this as your visual. x cubed squared means x to the 3 times 2 or x to the 6th. So if we write all those out, remember x cubed in the parentheses is x, x, x. Square that and that means we write this twice. So that means we have x, x, x times x, x, x. So how many is that altogether? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
We have six of them all together, which is why we have the six. The quick way, though, is to multiply the exponents. So usually when you see parentheses, think multiply the exponents. Let's take a look at an example. First of all, it's helpful to think of two as two to the first. And then think how we have more than one power in this parentheses. So it's best if we think of it like two to the first cubed and d to the fourth cubed, or two to the one times three and d to the four times three. Two to the one times three is two cubed, d to the four times three is d to the twelfth. Two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight, so this is eight d to the twelfth. Let's take a look at example f. Let's begin the way we did the other one, where we take each base and give it an exponent. Three is the same as three to the first. a to the sixth, b to the first, g to the first, h to the sixth, and all of it to the fourth. Now we can multiply the four to each of those exponents. So this three is three to the one times four, a to the six times four, b to the one times four, g to the one times four, and h to the six times four. Now we can do a little bit of simplifying. Three to the one times four makes three to the fourth, a, six times four, 24, b to the fourth, g to the fourth, and h to the 24th. And instead of saying three to the fourth, that's the same as 81, because it's three times three times three times three, which makes 81. Just a quick hint, I like to do this by saying three times three is nine, three times three is nine, and nine times nine is 81. So we can simplify and write 81, a to the 24th, b to the fourth, over g to the fourth, h to the 24th. Now I usually look to see, do I have any other a's? No. Any other b's? No. g's? No. And h's? No, because sometimes I may have to apply another law of exponents before it's fully simplified. Five, negative exponents. That means use the reciprocal, such as x to the negative two means one over x squared. Flip it over. So if I see w to the negative two, well, when I don't see a denominator, remember that's like an invisible one. That's the same as the reciprocal one over w squared. But once I flip it over, I don't have a negative exponent anymore. And there's my final answer. How about h? Well, notice that the nine is nine to the first. The g is the only one that has a negative exponent. The h is like h to the first. Again, we can think of this being all divided by one. So the only thing that has a negative exponent is this g. So it's the only one that will take the reciprocal and write one over g cubed. The other parts will stay the same. Nine is still in the numerator and h is still in the numerator. So ultimately, nine times one times h makes nine h, and then we have divided by g cubed. Let's look at example i and start by writing how we did an example h with negative three to the one, m to the negative two over five to the one, and p to the negative eight. Remember here when we had a negative exponent, 
how the reciprocal meant it was 1 over g to the positive 3. So the quick way to think about m to the negative 2 is that it's going to end up in the denominator as m to the positive 2. And the p to the negative 8, when taking the reciprocal, will end up in the numerator as p to the positive 8. Let's rewrite what we have. Negative 3 to the 1, the p to the positive 8, divided by 5 to the 1, and the m to the second that came down to the denominator. And then we can clean this up a bit. Negative 3p to the eighth over 5m squared. Finally, the exponent of 0. Anything except 0 to the 0 power is 1. There's your visual. x to the 0 is 1. So notice in example n, 6x to the 0. Well, remember 6 is like 6 to the 1st times x to the 0. Well, x to the 0, remember any number but 0 to the 0 makes 1. So that makes 1. So this is the same as saying 6 times 1, which is 6. Notice that all of this is raised to the 0. So all of this is 1. And that's just our final answer, 1. Here, this part does not have an exponent of 0, but all of this does. So all of that is 1. So the 5w does not have an exponent of 0, but this part does, so that part is 1. All of this is 1. So 5w times 1, 5w. And there are your laws of exponents. Take a couple minutes to write a short summary. Explain why we add exponents when we multiply variables that have the same base. Use an example to show your reasoning. See you in class.